you know, Guy Raz was the podcast called uh, How I Built This. Like, probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest um, business podcast out mm-hmm. there. But he talks to all like, you know, the Silicon Valley billionaire type people. And he wrote a book called How I Built This. It's like a kind of memoir or I guess summary of the show. And uh, when he did his book tour, I listened to a few of his interviews. And the question that everybody kept asking was like, what's the commonality? Like he talked to all these super insanely successful people. What's the commonality between all of them? And the one answer that he gave consistently every time was white. They learn. <laughs> <laughs> well, besides that, yeah. besides that, they're all white, Brendan. <laughs> yeah, um, just kidding. <laughs> was that they learn how to handle rejection? Yes, that's a that's, that's the, a big that was thing. The, the, the number one common denominator, and that helps in in sports. I learned that young in football, like you know, you're gonna take some else, yeah. but then in fighting, like the the valleys and peaks are so high. I was and say, so it's low. gotta be. More but then in stand up, in stand up, you're taking an L's, man. You try new material, and you're at the improv or laugh factory or ice house or comedy store. You take an L. It takes a special kind of person, especially early on in my career. When you take that L, to not get you know too down on yourself sure. and get back on stage and keep going, keep pursuing. So you had this really unique situation that I think not a lot of people really gave you credit for, which was that you you already had the platform before you switched, right? So like when a lot of people get into stand up from whatever they were in before, it wasn't a big like they're switching from being you know an insurance salesman in mm-hmm. Iowa to like being in stand up. Or the other thing, or themselves. the other thing would be you know you which is the typical thing is like an NBA player retires. He's an analyst a, f- a fighter yeah. retires. He's an analyst. Sure. Or you know, he opens a gym. Like that's right. the traditional path, right? That's like the, re- that's like the pivot, the traditional, that pivot. is not for me, but from, the, from like fighting professionally to going into stand up is a completely different pivot. upsets. A lot of people. Yeah. And you're starting, especially in that world, right? Cause upsets you have people that have people. been taken L's on stage for 18 mm-hmm. fucking years. Mm-hmm. And then they see like a newbie coming up and they're, and then, you get platformed. It's like, totally well, understand screw it. that guy. Totally you know understand I mean? it. Have no ana- animosity towards those people. I get it. Yeah. So what was it like for you coming into the space? And like, cause, cause the, the, the big thing is you had to learn while people were watching you. Yes. You didn't get to learn while nobody was watching. You. Yeah. Which I, which to me, like the level of dif- difficulty when you're doing that, the, the stakes are higher. Absolutely. So, do I wish I never did fighting and didn't have a fan base and start comedy? Fuck yeah, dude. You tell me I can go to open mic or I can show up at the comedy store and try and get a potluck or something like that. I have to, I, I don't get, I'm not allowed to do that. Right. So especially early on, I would go to places where, yeah, maybe somebody knows who I am, but they're not expecting me. Or I'd go to these weird locations just because you don't want to get in front of people who know you from fighting because sure. that's not good. You don't, you don't know where you, the chips are gonna fall there so for me it was like this weird like path to comedy trying to find places or or follow monsters that i would always put myself and that's where i think fighting and football came into play here because in fighting the one asset that i knew is like when it was sparring day there's certain guys like oh i don't want to spar the guy well why don't you want to spar the guy because it gives me problems okay well that's who you should be sparring because you're only gonna get better because if he's giving problems now when you when the lights are on you're getting paid for it you don't want those same problems that's what you want to gravitate towards but it's in our human nature not to go that way so i was good about going that way forcing myself to go that way so in in stand-up I think early on with young comics, it's not natural to want to follow a Joey Diaz, a Chris D'Elia, a Joe Rogan, a Brian Callen, a Theo Vaughn, a Tom Segura, a Burt Kreischer. I would ask to be followed by them or at least go right on before them. Or some, don't, don't give me a sweet cupcake spot. Yeah, yeah. Give, me, give me a shitty spot. Let yeah. me figure it out. So I think that's where my path has been different. Now you could say, oh, the reason he makes money torn is because he had a fan base prior. I haven't fought in nine years, man. You know, so yeah. that doesn't really work. But then also, you're open mic. Nobody knows who you are. You have the, you know, the freedom to get away with stuff, try sure, stuff. Right. I don't have that. I had to get pretty good, really, really fast, and it was very stressful. Still is, still yeah. is, right? Still is, right? 